the spline IK handle tool it works pretty much just like the IK handle tool except for the fact that it actually creates a curve to assist in the control of the joint chain. So the first thing you want to do is go to skeleton and IK handle tool and you want to choose the option box so that brings up your tool options. Uh, by default the settings are like this but I usually turn off the auto parent especially if I'm planning on creating external controls because the curve is a little difficult to select inside of the character so creating externalized controls is more convenient. So for, uh, another thing you want to do is disable auto simplify curve. This way when you create the curve it automatically generates a curve when you actually create the uh, spline IK handle I mean it automatically creates a curve that creates CVs that correspond to the position of the joints. So simply click at the root of the chain that you're creating the IK spline handle for and at the end of it. So you have your start and then your end. So as you can see it created the spline IK handle and if I had the joints you'll see that it also created a little curve on the inside which is right here. So this is the curve that's going to control the joint chain. And we bring the joint back. Now if I select, I'm going to disable joint selection. If I select the CVs along the curves, notice that one corresponds to the position of every joint. Usually at the end you're going to have about two. That's usually just standard because uh, there's always an anchor and the curve itself requires two points to add towards the opposite ends. So simply select the points and you can see that when I pull it, it actually deforms the joint structure relative to the position of the other CVs. So you can actually create a very snaky deformation easily using the CVs. And to quickly create some simple handles for these that you can easily select without converting the uh, curve into its component mode. You can select the C individual CVs and from create deformers you want to choose cluster and it'll just create like a little C which is uh, your cluster handle. And you can do that for every CV or cluster of CVs that you'd like to uh, or control. Once you've created your spline IK and you've created your clusters around the curve, usually it's a good idea to create an externalized control that will be outside of your geometry, and which will basically allow you to quickly connect to your clusters inside of the joint structure, or inside of the mesh and align with the joint structure. Basically you're creating externalized controls uh, to simplify the animation process. And I'm just going to duplicate some clusters here and just going to align them, relatively speaking, with my clusters. And then once in, they're relatively in a good spot, Okay, we'll lock that down and I'll take these and scale them a little bit so they're a little easier to see separately. So I have a separate control, one for each cluster. If you wanted to, you could uh, have two clusters controlled by one. It just depends on how much control you want and what kind of deformation. Uh, you could even, I'm just going to make a curve here. I'm going to use this curve as sort of my, uh, let's call it the root. And so these are going to be the controls, let's say, for my spine, and I'll just parent those into my uh, into my root, and then I'll freeze transformations. Freeze transformations under uh, modify the freeze transformations. Okay, and this is just so that my rotates and my translates all have a zero value, so that when I'm animating, I can easily get them back to the default position. So now, if I want 
this locator to control this curve or this cluster here. And all I have to do is I'm going to select the locator and I can either I can use a constraint. In this case, since I only need it to control the translation of that cluster, I can do a point constraint. And so I'll just repeat that a couple of times. And remember on your keyboard, if you press G, it repeats the last command. The last command was the point constraint. So I'm selecting my locator, shift selecting, cluster handle, and then pressing G on G on the keyboard to repeat the last command. So for the last cluster in our chain, I'm just going to select the cluster, and I want it to follow our uh, global, or in this case our root control. Uh, you always want to make sure that the last cluster is not connected into the chain that it's controlling. You want to have it connected to the parent of that chain, or basically a joint that's outside of the range of control that comes before it, or it could even be a curve, so long as it keeps the rest of your structure uh, aligned with the rest of the rig. So there you go, it's quickly been parented in there. And when I say parent, I'm just always talking about uh, P on the keyboard, not a constraint, just a regular parent, uh, which just uses the hierarchy to group things together, kind of. It's not really grouping. Grouping doesn't really parent objects together. Grouping just creates a container around them. When I'm actually using parenting, I'm connecting uh, the objects that are being selected directly together. Basically, the first object selected is the child, and the last object selected is the parent. This even is even the case if you select multiple objects. The last object selected would be the parent. So if I press P now, every one of these locators would be connected to follow this global, which they currently already are. And yet I can still go inside and I can animate and deform different parts of it within this little rig that I have set up. So that's just sort of a quick tutorial on uh, creating spline IKs and some basic controls.